So here's an update to the video I did a while back about pulling the oil pan off with um, the engine in the car. So with that video, I mean, you'll, you'll note that to sum everything up, we dropped the suspension down. Not a big deal. Um, essentially just the upper A-arm, take the shock, drop it down. On one side, you do need to pull the shock out. And that's so you can slide the transverse leaf spring a little bit over to drop it out of the other side. So the shock has come out on one side, just one side. And you do the suspension, upper A-arm and upper shock on both sides. It's just, again, on one side, you remove the shock. doesn't matter which side. It just gives you that little bit of extra room to slip the um, transverse leaf spring over and it falls out the other side. So um, th those are all crucial steps. Um, and the other steps is dropping the subframe. And you'll see right here, subframe bolt, and then right back there, subframe bolt. So you want to drop the subframe or K-member as far as you can drop. And you also want to put a jack stand, um, you know, of some sort underneath the back where the bell housing is. And that will essentially lift the motor up. And now, and I'm assuming that you have a lift. Um, I've got a, a my other shop. I've got a big, you know, like a nine foot two, two post lift. It gets the car up about six foot eight inches. I, I can barely walk on. I'm six foot, so I can barely clear max jacks. Um, I have essentially a uh, creeper um, that I, you know, crawl under the car. Um, right now, I've got it low because I'm working on the engine, but. Uh, Max Jack gets the car up, um, I don't know, maybe four and a half, five feet. Pretty pretty good, just I can't walk under it. Um, but I, I really like the Creeper, um, and I'm getting off topic. But um, point is, is when you get under the car, you want to jack the engine up, which will give you space to slip that oil pan out over the rear edge of that K-member. Um so you've got you've got some problems. You can't just drop the oil pan straight down. So you've got to create that clearance where the oil pan will slip down below the bell housing, the edge of that bell housing, but then also enough for it to get out at this angle. So you've got to create that clearance. And the only way to do that is to drop the K member and then use the lift for your car. Um yeah, I don't. I really don't know any other ways to do that. Some people can get creative, um, but use the lift and a jack stand to lower the car and raise the engine by putting the placing the jack stand on the uh, right where the torque tube um, it comes off the back of the bell housing. It's a strong point there, right at the mount, and that will raise or lift the engine up and create that clearance in between the oil pan and that K-member. And let me see if I can crawl under here and show you. So you can kind of see, you see where the oil pan has dropped down, right? But it's still not able to get out of there because of that bell housing. That bell housing hangs way down there in the back and it won't slip out. You see that? So you've got to get a jack under there, jack stand on that torque tube, and that will give you plenty of clearance. Once you get that, that'll give you another two and a half, three inches of clearance in that oil pan, and that will give you plenty of room to slip the oil pan right out at a nice angle. No big deal, not hard at all. Now, some of you have contacted me and you know, told me that you've used all the steps. Everything is really very helpful, which is awesome to hear. Um, but a couple of you have asked me, you know, how do you get the oil pan off? Like, it's a pain in the butt to get the oil pan off. And I'll tell you, if you have done the oil pan 
yourself like maybe a secondary time and you tend to use more GM sealant than, you know, like a, you know, an automated machine would lay down a, you know, a three millimeter bead or something like that. You know, <laughs> most of us are going to go a little bit crazy with the sealant and that's going to make that oil pan want to just feel like it's just TIG welded onto that engine on the bottom. So I have found another method and maybe I'm sure others know about this and have known it for a long time. Um, <clears throat> but I normally take like a big, like a pry screwdriver, right? Just a, like a pry bar, just like that. And there's a notch on the back of the oil pan, right in between the oil pan and the bell housing. And you can normally put this up in the notch and just back that, you know, just pry it. And when it pries down, it pulls the, the oil pan right down and pops it right off. And I got it off no problem like that the first time. Um, but this time, it did not want to budge. And I honestly, I felt like I was going to break the bell housing. The bell housing is a thick, <laughs> it, there's a pretty hefty flange on the front of that bell housing. And it was flexing in big time. And I'm like, man, if I break this bell housing with it in the car, you know, now I'm essentially going to have to pull the engine out and, you know, take the bell housing or put a new bell housing on. Just, I, I was out of options. So I was like, all right, what is another way? Let me put my thinking cap on and another way that I can fix this or get that oil pan off without, you know, damaging it. And I just happened... You know, I thought of a wedge, you know, sharpening the, the thing and using my mallet, you know, and, and, you know, getting it right in between a couple and no, uh, uh, not going to work. And then I happened to catch the lip on the oil pan right in the front here. There's a lip. You, you kind of can't see it because the sealant's all over here, but there is a lip that protrudes on the front here. And there's a lip that protrudes on the front on this side. Thank the Lord that that was done that way. I don't know if that was by design, but that lip essentially allows you to put the, you know, all of the pressure, the downward pressure um, on that oil pan to break that seal at the edge of the front, which is which is the smallest part of the 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 oil pan, right? That's probably the 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 least strongest uh, seal is at the front there. And what I did was I took and put a socket on a long extension. This is a half inch extension here, and I used uh, just a standard mallet. And if you take that right that socket and put it right on the lip of the oil pan, take your mallet. And just do some nice, easy hits on this. And you can hear it. You just, you actually want to listen to the sound. And you don't have to beat the crap out of this. Believe me, my oil pan was on there. And I have never seen an oil pan on there like this one. So I'm, I'm thinking that you guys will probably, you know, be at least under the threshold of where I'm at. If you take on both sides, just, just alternate. Do some, do, you know, some taps on both sides and then gradually increase until you start hearing it separate. You'll hear the noise and you'll hear it. And then all of a sudden you'll hear a hollow. You'll, you'll hear the, the oil pan separating and that's it. Once I tapped it a few more times on both sides, it broke the seal all the way to the back, all the way to the back. Oil pan just dropped right off the block and I just I was elated because, uh, I mean, it was, uh, it was just the easiest way ever to get that oil pan separated off the bottom of that block. And uh, to me, of the entire process of getting the oil pan all out of the car, everything else, suspension, you know, um, you know, undoing the sway bar, right? Undoing the sway bar completely on both sides, Loosening all the way out the steering, uh, electric steering rack bolt on this side, taking the bolt out on the other side, 
right? That allows you to get a, a pry bar, right, in over here, and you can pry, you can get that steering rack out far. I mean, believe me, plenty of room to get a ratchet in there, um, but but more, and I'm swapping, you know, putting a K-Tech oil pump on, so I had to remove, you know, the supercharger or the pro charger, water pump, all my accessories, everything, and, um, you know, so you don't have to pull the steering rack, you just have to take the, the you know, the bolts off of the sway bar and the bolts out of the rack on one side. You can leave the bolt in on the rack on this side. It's right there. You don't have to take it all the way out. So you can just thread it right back in, throw everything back together. But truthfully speaking, is nothing to it. And and I, I when I first tackled this job, I, I thought it was just going to be an uh, absolute nightmare. But now that I've done it a couple times... Um, Three times actually total now. Um, I've, I've got it down to where I mean, it is so just pull the suspension, grab you, you know, get you an electric impact wrench will do it, or you know, just a uh, air in wrench, both of them. And honestly, I use a bigger air impact wrench on my subframe bolts, um, a little bit more torque. But if yours are not really in there that hard, <clears throat> you may just you make and break them loose with like a breaker bar or a longer half inch extension. But once once those subframe or K-member bolts get loose, they should they should come right out. Don't take the K-member bolts all the way out. Just knock them down. You know those bolts. You could probably you can see here um, how long those bolts are. But as you can see, the K-member still has some room to drop here. There's there's uh, roughly three eighths of an inch there. But that's a good couple inches. Well, you know, inch and three quarter. Well, maybe two inches. But two and a half or so, you can drop that subframe or K member. And that's a lot. That's that. You cannot, it just don't even try it without dropping the K member. So <clears throat> remember that. One shot comes out on one side. Um, take the, the flange bolts off on the transverse leaf spring. Um, pull the transverse leaf spring all the way over to one side. And you have to press dent. You know, you got to get your A arms down. Um, so, and once you get the transverse leaf spring out, you can get to the front bolts on the oil pan that are, you know, cause that, that leaf spring goes right where you just, you, you have no way to get those bolts. So don't even try it without it. Pull the leaf, transverse leaf spring, pull the A-arms off, drop the cane member, get your car up, put a jack stand under, as I said. Um, and this is after you've popped the oil pan with everything I said. Raise the engine up and bam, slip the oil pan right out and that should do it. So, um, I, I hope these videos, uh, do help. I, anytime I find an aha moment, I at least would like to post. I haven't posted videos in a while. Car's been down for a little while. Um, and just, I've been with other priorities, but, uh, hopefully in a week we'll have the new oil pump on. And also I'm doing a new video. Um, I've already started where I'm actually creating some some new mounting hardware and all that for, I've got an improved racing uh, MH or MX245 uh, heat exchanger that I'm gonna do an oil cooler, that is. Um, so I'm gonna do a dedicated oil cooler setup here. So subscribe and I'll have a, some more cool videos coming with that dedicated oil cooler and all of the, the systems that go with that, including a secondary Holly oil pressure sensor, everything. So um, appreciate you guys hanging in there, staying subscribed, and uh, I'll have some uh, cooler videos coming soon.